What's up, everybody? Matt Gajewski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel. And today I am here to talk about the Big 12. We are getting into the best bets in that conference ahead of the 2022 college football season. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. We're also brought to you today by BetMGM. They were powering the show, and they have a very special offer for you guys. You can bet $10. On any MLB game, it must be a pregame money line bet, and you are going to turn that $10 into $200. Use the video link in the description below or use the promo code OSNRFI to claim your $200 now. Okay, diving into this, we have the Big 12 on deck, and there's a lot of interesting topics to discuss here. The first bet I want to get to is Oklahoma. They have a nine and a half win total. The over on that is plus 100 and I like it, but I think we can do a little bit better if we look to Oklahoma in some other markets. They're plus 180 to win the big 12. They're plus 450 to just make the college football playoff. You're getting paid off in those scenarios. You know, if Oklahoma wins nine and a half games, they're going to have a really good shot to win this conference overall and probably make the playoff. So I think you can just get better odds by looking at them in those other markets. And first and foremost with Oklahoma, they are changing coaches. I don't think this is going to be a huge deal overall when you look at them in the grand scheme of things. And it particularly comes down to the offense. A lot of people, they don't like that Lincoln Riley's gone. I understand he's been an excellent play caller, but they get Jeff Levy in. Jeff Levy, he's ties to Ole Miss with Lane Kiffin, ties to UCF. And Brett Venables in a, is a fantastic defensive-minded coach. So hopefully they can get both sides of the ball right. From there, you have an awesome roster which consists of a strong transfer in Dylan Gabriel. Dylan Gabriel comes over from UCF, and in the 2020 season, he was PFF's third highest graded quarterback. Last year, he did get injured, so we didn't get to see him and that offense, but that's a phenomenal talent. They have the likes of Marvin Mims returning, one of the most efficient receivers on a yards per route run basis in the country. They have four offensive line starters or players with starting experience coming back, and even more in terms of depth. On defense, they return five starters, but one positive and a silver lining to all the injuries they sustained last year is that a lot of these players that had part-time starts, they're coming back with some experience. So while it's five full-time starters returning, a lot of players have some experience on the defense here. So with Venables coming in, with the transfer class they, re they recruited in, and Dylan Gabriel overall, I think this team is a solid bet to eclipse nine and a half wins. But instead, I am going to take them to win the Big 12 at plus 180. Next team I want to talk about is Texas. This has been a polarizing team all offseason, and their win total is at eight, but it's juiced towards the over minus 145. I think this is still okay to bet. You might be able to get some better odds on Texas just looking at them in the season, but overall, this roster is awesome, but it all hinges on Quinn Ewers. Fortunately, Quinn Ewers, he has the pedigree. He has the mobility, former number one overall recruit. All he has to do, in my opinion, is play at a league average level to get this Texas roster over eight wins. It's so good. Bijan Robinson comes back, and he's probably the best all-round back in the country, six feet, 215. Awesome efficiency stats, yards after contact, force missed tackles. He does it all, and he catches the ball. The backups are solid, too, in Roshan Johnson and Keelan Robinson. The receiver room is amazing. They had freshman breakout Xavier Worthy. He's now entering his second year. They get standout Wyoming transfer Isaiah Nayer, who had 878 yards on just 44 catches. They still have slot veteran Jordan Whittington. He has been injured, injured a lot in his career. So if he's injured again for whatever reason, they also added transfers to Gia Hall, former four-star from Alabama, and Tariq Milton, former speedster from Iowa State, not to mention some of the other four and five stars they have waiting in the wings. Then on the offensive line, they are returning three starters here. That's going to be a question, but they have two five starters and a slew of four starters coming in who can fill the void, not to mention seven starters returning on defense, three of whom on the defensive line had at least honorable mention all-conference honors. This is a very complete roster. Yes, it does hinge on the production of Ewers, but there's so much around him. I find it hard to believe he won't find success. From here, I want to talk about TCU. Their win total is just six and a half. The over is at minus 135. I am more than comfortable laying this. If you look at the way the Big 12 shakes out overall, you have two clear favorites in Oklahoma and Texas. Then you have kind of a second tier, Oklahoma and Baylor, and a third tier that is TCU, Kansas State, and Iowa State. I think TCU is far and away the best team in this little range. Max Dugan returns as their signal caller. 
They did lose Zach Evans to the portal, their running back, but Kentry Miller was phenomenal in a small sample last year. If he can play to the same efficiency he did last year, we're looking at a solid runner. He's six feet, 206 pounds, averaged five yards after contact and forced a missed tackle on nearly 36% of his carries. Those are amazing numbers. And if he isn't able to play that level, they also got Louisiana Lafayette transfer, Amani Bailey. All of their receivers were productive. Quinton Johnson has the makings of a pure alpha. 2.60 yards per route run is phenomenal. Darius Days, Tay Barber, these were solid role players for this team. And the offensive line returns three solid starters and hit the portal pretty hard here too. Not to mention defense, and this is probably the strength of their team. Eight starters are back on defense for this team. TCU, they also do not play the most difficult schedule. Non-con, you're looking at Colorado and Tarleton State to kick things off. SMU is going to be a little tougher, but I think this team can get over six and a half wins. And last one, just one we'll mention, Kansas. Yes, Kansas, two and a half wins. The under sitting at plus 115, and I think it's the play. I won't dive into their roster too much. It's actually improving. But when you look at this team overall to win the Big 12, they're plus 2,500. That's, excuse me, they're plus 25,000, not 2,500. That would be much better. 25,000 to win the Big 12. Far and away the worst team in this conference. They're going to be significant underdogs in each and every one of those contests. In their non-con, they play Tennessee Tech. They play Houston. They're going to be over seven point underdogs in that con- conference, excuse me, in that game. And then against Duke, which might be a pick em. I think at best you get Kansas winning two games. If you're going to give me plus money on a two and a half win total towards the under, I got to take that as well. But to recap, before we get out of here, I am betting Oklahoma to win the big 12 plus 180. Again, if you want to take them to get to the college football playoff, it's plus 450. I'm taking Texas over eight on the dot minus 145. TCU over six and a half minus 135 in Kansas under two and a half plus 115. My name is Matt Gajeski. I'm on Twitter at Matt underscore Gajeski. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you to Bet MGM for sponsoring the video. Let me know what you think about these teams and who might be eligible to win the Big 12. Any win totals you like, I'm here for all of it. We will see you guys again next time.